and um, it's for modeling things like uh, functional connectivity, uh, uh, Granger causality, um, looking at statistics uh, across uh, subject populations and trials and such, trying to get at these network dynamics in the brain um, that uh, we all know and love. Uh, it's got a modular architecture, so it's designed to support different modeling approaches. We're going to be going through uh, some of these throughout uh, the different sessions covering SIF later on. Uh, there's an emphasis in the toolbox on techniques like vector auto regression and state space modeling and several novel uh, approaches for visualizing uh, network dynamics across time, frequency, space. Um, the outline of uh, the workshop sessions um, are as such. So today, we're going to cover the theoretical foundations uh, for uh, uh, modeling uh, functional and effective connectivity in the brain using contemporary techniques and legacy techniques. So that means covering things like functional connectivity measures, what's phase locking value, phase amplitude coupling, uh, coherence, uh, then going on to linear dynamical systems and the vector autoregressive model. We're going to learn about the theory behind that, how it works, how you fit these kinds of models. Uh, Granger causality and different effective connectivity measures. We're going to cover a range of those. You're going to understand when you come out of this session both the theoretical foundation for Granger causality and causality in general, some understanding of, of how that's different from correlation or coherence measures and why it's important to uh, use causal models. Um, we're going to talk about uh, scalp dynamics, like modeling network dynamics at the level of the sensor versus the source, and some approaches for source modeling, and then how we adapt to time-varying dynamics in the data, so how we track network dynamics at the uh, time scale of, you know, sub-second time scales. Um, we're going to have a practicum at the end on uh, walking through SIFT, so uh, it'll be at about an hour. We're going to do some hands-on work there and you'll get a feel for the software. So that's today, 2 to 5 p.m. in, in the Viz Lab. Um, tomorrow, we're going to move on to more advanced topics, the second set of theoretical foundations. We're going to talk about how we validate our uh, causal models uh, statistically to make sure we fit the data properly, multivariate v versus bivariate analysis approaches for connectivity, how we put constraints, probabilistic constraints in our models uh, so that we can uh, fit larger models, higher dimensional models with smaller amounts of data, and single trial estimation and state space modeling approaches. Uh, also statistical testing will be covered, uh, bootstrapping, uh, phase randomization, uh, group uh, statistics, and uh, we'll conclude by basically an hour of hands-on simulation-based training where we'll be able to play around with using uh, CIF's rich uh, dynamical simulation package, explore different kinds of models, and, um, and also opportunity for you to play around with your own data in that session. It's going to be a bit of a um, uh, less structured than the walkthrough today. So that's going to be tomorrow, again, 2 to 5 p.m. It's going to be in the INC open space. I've heard that some of you have registered, I think about 50 of you have registered for tomorrow and maybe two-thirds of that for today. Just FYI, those of you who have only registered for tomorrow, I won't be giving a lot of introductory background. So if you come in tomorrow, that, that's fine, but you, unless you already have a fundamental understanding of um, you know, vector autoregressive modeling, you may, it may be a little bit over your head because we're going to be referring to some of the things from today. That being said, the slides are up there um, as PDF, so you can go through the slides tonight, for instance, and it is relatively self-explanatory through the slides. Um, in terms of what we're covering in the basic session today. But that's just something to keep in mind in case you're still deciding whether or not to attend today. You're going to get a lot of the meat uh, of the basic foundations today. Um, okay, just a quick overview of um, SIF, just so you get a sense of what uh, the software does and, and, and such. Uh, and a few fundamental things like the requirements as you're preparing for the modeling sessions. Um, you need EEG lab. Uh, and you need MATLAB 2008A through 2013B. SIF does not yet upgrade to be compatible with all the new changes that MATLAB introduced in 2000. Actually, this will probably work with 2014A, but uh, changes from 2014B and especially 2015 and later um, may cause some issues if you're using it from the graphics. Uh, you can use it from the command line, but if you're using the graphical interactive tools, uh, you'll run into problems. So that's something that, uh, unfortunately, you'll need to either pair up with someone who has a version of MATLAB of that sort or, or grab one before the hands-on sessions. Um, some of the functions may leverage tool, uh, functions from uh, Signal Processing Toolbox and Statistics Toolbox. Uh, it's rare that you'll encounter that. Uh, you, if you have them, great. If you don't, um, it should be okay. Um, 
in order to get SIF, the best way is through the EEG Lab Extension Manager. You could do that now and, and through my lectures uh, over the next couple hours, just be downloading it. Um, if you've never used the Extension Manager, you can access it through File, Manage EEG Lab Extensions, Data Processing Extensions, and then you just find SIFT and install it. The version you want is 1.4.1. If you get started on that early, it'll be great because that way we don't have like 50 people all downloading from the network, you know, 80 some megabytes at exactly the same time. So at your pleasure, just uh, download that. It'll also be on USB keys circulating around, but I I'd say use the extension manager. Okay, um, just uh, very briefly here, um, overview of, of SIFT. As I said, SIFT is a modular toolbox, so there's basically five or six different modules. Um, Pre-processing. Uh, one of the core modules, uh, dynamical modeling, which includes model fitting and validation and connectivity, uh, doing statistics on the outputs of those models, uh, visualizing the results, and so that's your typical workflow for a single subject. There's uh, some uh, component of routines for group analysis, uh, hierarchical Bayesian modeling and such, we'll cover a little bit of that. And there's a simulation module that allows you to build sophisticated, you know, reasonably realistic dynamical models of neural activity and project them to the scalp and build basically simulated EEG data under a very wide array of different kinds of uh, network assumptions. So that allows you then to explore uh, different types of modeling approaches with a validated statistical um, uh, or validated uh, simulation package. Um, the pre-processing uh, routines include a variety of different techniques like uh, detrending your data, downsampling, differencing, normalizing. All the tools are accessed through a GUI. Um, modeling, different ways to fit your models. We'll go over this uh, today. Uh, different ways to fit your models to the data. Uh, probabilistically uh, constrained or unconstrained approaches. Um, so you can choose different modeling approaches. This is a GUI that you use to interact with the, uh, the modeling tool chain and select things like different optimal model orders and we'll cover a lot of this through our, throughout our sessions. Uh, validating the model, different ways of uh, testing whether your models fit the data well, whiteness tests, consistency, stability. Again, graphical tools help you visualize the results of that and make sense and determine whether your model's uh, fitting the data properly. Uh, connectivity analysis, uh, there's about uh, 15 or 16, I have to count them again, it's been a little while, but a number of different uh, measures for, fun for functional and effective connectivity. Uh, pretty much all the ones you typically will find in the research over the last decade you'll, uh, can be derived from these kinds of models, so you'll find them here. We'll cover them. And uh, statistics, uh, different ways of doing statistics. Uh, asymptotic analytic estimates, um, they give you some confidence intervals on different measures. Allows you to look at things like, do I have uh, connectivity that's greater than zero? Um, or is the connectivity significantly different than some baseline or different between two different conditions? These are some of the different kinds of tests that we, we typically want to apply. Uh, phase randomization allows you to, to do some tests to see if there's significantly non-zero connectivity, bootstrap, jackknife, cross-validation techniques, and, and some other uh, Bayesian methods. So we'll cover some of this uh, tomorrow. Um, this is an example of the GUIs that you can use to access those different uh, modeling techniques and um, both parametric and non-parametric approaches um, for statistical modeling. And then uh, visualization, interactive time frequency grids allow you to view the uh, uh, connectivity data across time, frequency, space, uh, anatomical locations. Interactive 3D causal brain movies allow you to create basically a 3D brain uh, network model or map or view. Uh, that you can explore and create a movie out of to see how the network dynamics change over time. Um, and a couple other uh, uh, um, methods that uh, allow you to visualize other aspects of the data. This is how the time frequency grid uh, GUI looks. You can customize a lot of different features. But essentially it produces a, a plot like this, which is going to be the bread and butter of how you examine the results of your data as you're going through the modeling process. Um, just to give you a quick taste of this, each pixel here reflects the in this case, the causality of the information transfer from a source in the brain here in the column to a source in the brain on the row. And a big red hot spot would indicate that at a given time on the x-axis and at a given frequency on the y-axis, there's a burst of, uh, of uh, cause, causal flow of information transfer between those two sources. So for instance, like here, we can see a theta burst of activity right after uh, pressing a button, in this case, making a mistake. 
uh, between uh, a, certain, a source in the uh, parietal cortex and a, and a source in the, um, in this case, uh, in the visual cortex. And uh, so you can click on these and interact with them and you'll get more in-depth views where you can look at directional information transfer, how one area drives another area, they, two areas, one area may drive another area but not be reciprocally, reciprocally driven. So you can separate those out and look at them, uh, uh, the information flow from one area to another separate from the feedback. And this gives you a bit of a richer view. Uh, this is the causal brain movie, just gives you kind of a 3D, 3D view of that network dynamics. Here somebody's committing an error and we see a, a network uh, emerge here, uh, sort of a stopping network. This is a go-no-go -go task actually. Uh, sorry, this is not an error, this is where they're just trying to stop, trying to um, initiate a, uh, uh, in the go-no-go -no -go paradigm, trying to stop. Um, and uh, inhibit a response. Uh, I'll skip over this. There's some other ways you can look at the data. Group analysis, as I said, different ways to do group statistics. We'll talk about that. There's a measure projection plugin as well that allows you to, uh, to look at clusters of, uh, of like causal outflow across multiple subjects. We'll talk a bit about that. And the uh, multi-view uh, hierarchical Bayesian learning uh, tool chain, um, which allows you to look at uh, statistical confidence intervals and averages um, derived in a principal Bayesian way across multiple subjects in the presence of missing data. So if you have dipoles in some subjects and not in another, this tries to make inferences still about what the mean looks like even when you're missing a lot of data. Um, Simulation package, we'll use that quite a lot tomorrow in our, in our walkthroughs, but it, as I said, allows you to generate realistic source dynamics and um, uh, some nonlinear uh, dynamics as well. Uh, for the linear dynamical modeling approach, here's just kind of an example of how you, you would use it. Uh, you've got, here you want to create a uh, trivariate coupled oscillator model where you've got three sources interacting, two of them non-stationary. It's a very common kind of thing you see in neural dynamics where areas are not just driving each other persistently, but maybe they're doing it in a burst-like fashion, say, you know, following, say, a theta or a delta oscillation, and sources interact in an oscillatory fashion. So you can construct that kind of a dynamical model here by uh, adding a, a few lines of code, um, if it shows. Oh, there we go. Uh, so you can write out a few lines of code like this and, and allows you to construct that simulation and uh, ultimately um, get the uh, simulated data, sort of lagging and showing, but uh, there we go. Um, so this allows you to generate this kind of simulated data where you've got bursty-like oscillations and interactions between the different sources. You can create more complex simulations like seizures. Um, and ultimately, you can bypass that whole scripting environment and just use uh, a graphical tool chain to very quickly construct dynamical models where you say, I want to pick these areas in the brain, I'm going to couple them up in this way, generate the dynamics and project it to the scalp where now you have basically realistic EEG data that's driven by a reasonably plausible model of the uh, uh, dynamics. And so uh, finally, uh, distribution educational resources here. Um, uh, you go to SIFT Wiki to get access to your documentation and such and to download the software. You can get it from the plugin manager or Nitrix. Uh, as we talked about before. Okay, so that's the uh, whirlwind tour. And uh, again, today, session one, introduction. Tomorrow, we'll deep dive into the uh, more advanced topics. And um, hope to uh, see you there. Thanks.